What's up, Bodyweight Warriors, and welcome back to another video and another follow along. Today, I want to share with you my daily seven stretching routine. Now, this is a flexible routine. It's going to be different probably every single time that you do it. And that's because these seven stretches or seven positions can be modified. And I'm going to talk you through that as we go through the follow along to get different results out on it based on how you're feeling on the day. Where do you feel tight? Where do you feel that you need to stretch? This is personally how I set up my stretching at the moment. I'll try to get into these positions every single day. And that's enough for me just to keep things ticking over and greasing that groove. So that's the basic setup here. Without any more ramblings, let's jump into this routine. Might want some equipment. I've got here a bolster, some yoga blocks. Probably both are gonna be somewhat useful to you having some cushions. Always nice for this sort of stuff because it's generally gonna be a little bit more of a relaxed routine. As I said, it's about sitting in positions and getting a reasonable stretch. So first of all, we're gonna start off with the neck. Now you don't need to be seated how I am. You can be seated in any single way, but we're just gonna focus on stretching out the neck. Now the neck can hold a lot of tension. So usually I like to just start off with a couple of head movements, whether that's forward to the side, to the back, kind of feel things out. Usually for me personally, my traps are always tight. It's again, quite common with desk workers. So I like to spend a little bit of time with some lateral flexion of the neck. We're gonna first of all, just pull the head to the side, I'm not applying much pressure with this top hand. I'm literally kind of using it as a dead weight on top of my head. I'm just gonna reach that hand out to the side I'm going to move my hand around and see if I notice that the stretch changes at all. Whether I go a little bit behind, if I rotate my hand up to the sky or not. I'm just going to apply this constant pressure with the hand there, move about until I find a spot that I'm like, okay, that's the stretch. You'll kind of find out when you get it. And then in this position, I always like to do a little bit of PNF with these neck contractions. So I'm just going to try and gently press my head back into the hand. So just gentle 50% effort. Just feel a little bit of contraction. Breathe in for five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Breathe out and then just try to sink a little bit deeper on this one. We're just gonna do two more of those per side. So press into the hand. Five, four, three, two, one. And breathe out, get a little bit deeper. With this one as well, as well in this position, try to feel like you're gonna pull that shoulder down and away from the ears as well. So last one, you can press that head in. Five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. I'm just gonna relax again, it's chest up. Again, move around a little bit, quite like turning away. You can play with pressing the head, so trying to get that rotation. That's gonna get a little bit more into the scalenes, which can go down into the chest and in the bicep. Again, looking up as well. I'm gonna play around with the angles. This is where you need to feel it out for yourself. But again, doing those PNF contractions. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna just place that hand on top, adding that load, not pressing down too much with it. We're gonna reach that hand out. Just gonna move around for a second, try and find, okay, does that change the stretch? Did that go into the bicep a little bit? Play with that rotation as well. Try to find a point where you like, that is the stretch you want. It may be different from side to side. Once you've found it, again, we're gonna play that five second contraction. So we're gonna press the head into the hand. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. So we're gonna do another one. So breathe in. Five seconds, press that hand into the hand, and head into the hand. Five, four, three, two, one, get a little deeper. Remember pulling that shoulder blade away as well. Last one here, so press into the hand. Five, four, three, two, one, breathe out. Again, we can play with a little bit of uh, different positions here. So pressing that head away. Guy. Just another five, 10 seconds here. Again, reaching that hand away from you as well. And I'm just gonna finish up here with a little bit of a head tuck. So I'm gonna place both hands on the back of the head or one hand on the chest. I'm gonna try and press my chin in. And with the other hand, I'm just gonna apply a gentle pressure, pulling up and forward. So it should feel like getting a nice little stretch down the back of the neck. 
gonna hold this one for 20 seconds. Slightly active here, not pulling or pressing too hard with the hands. Just trying to be as tall as possible. Right, so we can shake it off, move around a bit. Do a little bit of a circle with the head, if that feels good. So that for me is position one, is to work on the neck. Sometimes as well, I'd like to get a lacrosse ball, stick it in there, roll around for a bit. Uh, but usually the stretching does the job just to release out the traps a bit. And as I said, this is a good one if you're sat working, if you're doing handstands, especially all of that sort of stuff. Right, next position is shoulder extension. So we're gonna twist around onto the side. I'm gonna come forward into a seated position with the hands behind us. So shoulder extension, we're gonna work on stretching out the bicep. We're gonna work on stretching out the pec minor as well. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start wiggling forward with my hips. So I'm gonna keep my shoulders nice and active. So I'm gonna pull my shoulder blades back. I'm gonna lift my chest up, keep the hands about shoulder width. Just keep wiggling my hips forward until I find a reasonable sort of stretch coming over the biceps, probably into the chest. Just keep wiggling, somewhat of an active position this one. And again, play around a little bit. With side to side, you can bend the arm a little bit. That was gonna focus more of the stretch towards the shoulder. If I keep the straight arm, I'm gonna feel more of a stretch over the entire bicep, potentially into the forearms a little bit as well. So again, chest up here. I'm gonna keep just walking. I'm not, now I can keep wiggling those hips forward. Again, just holding that position. But remember, it's active. So I'm actively pressing my hands down into the ground. Lifting my chest up. Just gonna kind of hold this position again, just moving from side to side, adding a bit of a twist if you can do. You can play of getting the hands wider as well. So hands wider is gonna bring a little bit more of the chest in. The wider you go of the hands, the, the narrower you go, the more it's gonna focus on sort of the bicep anterior delt. So I'd like to get a little bit wider. Again. Always pushing up with the shoulders keeping the chest nice and open. I'm just gonna hold for about another 20 seconds. I think it will be about a minute in total. Again, if this is a little bit intense for you, just feel free to come out of the stretch or even just bending the arm slightly will take us off some of that strain from the elbow as well. You can do a little bit of head movement as well. Sometimes a little bit into the neck and just gonna walk ourselves back up into that top position. So that's kind of position two. I don't like to spend too much time there because my shoulders in general are not too bad. I like to focus more on the lower body, which we're gonna move to the next position, which is gonna be the glutes. Now, hands down, the, my favorite glute stretch and the one that I do on every single day is the posterior hip capsule stretch. So we're gonna bring this right leg in, we're gonna bend it. We're gonna take this left leg and place the left leg over the right knee. So we're kind of coming into like a cross leg position. We're gonna keep it nice and vertical. And then all we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and hug this left leg. So I'm gonna bring my chest towards that left leg and I'm just gonna sit here. So usually I would hold this position for about two minutes, which is what we're gonna to do today. But you can always play around the position because it will change the stretch. So I can bring myself a little bit up more. So I'm gonna try and think about pulling my sternum towards my kneecap maybe. That's gonna focus the stretch more on like the glute medius. Or I can try to bring my shoulder down more towards the ground. That's gonna get a bit more into the piriformis. So can I play with both of those? Kind of figure out where it's tight or you can spend a little bit of time in each position. I think I might spend today a little bit of time higher up and then shift down as I hold the stretch. I think this is a good way of, of setting up stretching because ultimately it does change a little bit and it changes as well with your level of flexibility. You develop flexibility in different areas of the body at different rates. So for me, having these positions, which we're gonna get through, so we've done the first three, we've got neck. So I say neck, neck's not really a position, but just releasing some of the tension in the neck We've got shoulder extension, just a really common one just to open up for a lot of people because biceps tend to be tight, pec tends to be tight, especially when we sit at a desk and we're in this kyphotic forward shoulder position a lot of the time. Uh, and then obviously glutes, again, get very tight if you're sitting or if you're just training, tends to always need some form 
of opening up. So I'm going to start shifting down now. I'll get a little bit further down with trying to get this sort of shoulder towards. Give about another 30 seconds here. It's nice as well to sit in a stretch for a couple of minutes. It's something that not enough people spend enough time in stretches a lot of the time. And actually, sometimes in certain positions with certain individuals, they just need to spend more time in a position. They need to sit in a stretch and they need to do, use a method which is literally called waiting out the stretch. The stretch is a reflex at the end of the day and you can wait out that sensation and look for it to disappear. Okay, I think that's enough for this left-hand side. We're just gonna simply swap over. So I'm gonna turn myself around. I'm gonna swap to left leg down, cross over, bring the right leg, right foot over the left knee. And then from here, I'm just gonna try and hug my leg. Actually, I'm gonna flip myself around again. I'm gonna start off high, I think, and then I'm gonna work my way down a little bit. One sort of modification that you can do with this stretch here is you can start adding a little bit of rotation of that spine as well. So I'm gonna get in my right hand now, I'm gonna press off my right thigh. I'm gonna try and make a bit of space between my stomach. I'm just gonna try and twist and look behind me a little bit. Some of you might do this and get a nice little crack in the back. Again, don't need to force yourself into any positions, just try to feel it out, feel where you feel the stretch. I think that's the kind of important thing with this routine, it's, it's, it's down to you, uh, down to where you feel it. And as well, you might find that there are certain elements of this routine that you feel more of a stretch than others. So you might wanna just pause the video and spend a little bit more time stretching that position. If you find the glutes are an area of tightness, you could spend some more time with some 90-90 with some pigeon work. That's that's exactly what I'll do. If I, on the day my glutes feel particularly tight, I'll spend a little bit more time stretching that area. So we've got another minute here. I'm gonna start working my way down, my shoulder down towards the ground. move on to the next few positions. As I said, because this routine is a little bit more relaxed as well, it's more about, it's almost a, not, not necessarily a mindfulness practice, but it's a, it's a relaxing practice. It's something I do in the evening, maybe watching some TV, chilling out. So I'm just gonna focus on my breathing. I'm just gonna sit in a stretch, I'm not pushing myself to maximum effort. It's just greasing that groove. So another, Sort of 10 seconds here. And we can come out of this one. And that is our third position, or our third stretch is focused on glutes. Next, we're gonna move into position number four, which is gonna be squat to pike, or squat and pike. So I like to spend a little bit of time mixing these two positions. So our first of all, I wanna just get you to come into a resting squat if you can do. If you can't get into a resting squat, then I would start with just the pike position. So, when I, so starting in a pike, we're just gonna walk around. If you can't touch the floor, we're gonna make sure we're able to get palms to a comfortable depth of surface. So for me, the floor is fine. But if you can't touch the floor, if you're sort of hovering and you're hanging out and it's quite an intense stretch, then you want to make it so that it's comfortable. Once you're in this position, I'm going to start off, we're just going to play around with moving the feet around. So we're going to try and walk the feet so they come towards the center. We're going to spend a little bit of time here. We're going to see how that changes the stretch. We're going to walk the feet out in heel toe shuffle them, go to about shoulder width. Again, see how that changes the stretch. I'm just gonna bring mine back to kind of middle. And I'm just gonna twist a little bit from side to side. So we're gonna first of all go to our right hand side. Spend a bit of time here. And then we're gonna switch back. So twist to the left hand side. I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times noting how the stretch changes and where I'm feeling it. So when you twist to the side, you're probably gonna feel a little bit more on the lower back. You're gonna feel it more intensely on the side you're twisting to. Just gonna do 
one more twist per side. So we're going to come to that right hand side again. And the left hand side. And in this position now, we're going to stay in that pike. We're going to grab an area of our body that we can grab comfortably. So for me, I'm going to put hands on underneath my feet. But if you can't get that far, you can go potentially just fingertips underneath the feet. Or you can grab onto your ankles as well. And all we're going to do is we're going to do a bit of a transition, as I said, from that squat position. So we're going to squat down a bit. And we're going to extend up into the pike again. Just move around a bit. As we squat down, we're going to notice that we can now sort of bring our thighs onto our chest and as we extend back up we're just going to try and think about pulling and trying to keep our chest in contact or our stomach in contact with our thighs so just going to do five of these again pausing in the top of that position each one just moving around a bit that's three so four here again over each one you should sort of feel yourself sink a little bit deeper into the stretch and last one just a nice squat down extend try to keep that contact between the the stomach and the thighs really pull yourself in use the hip flexors use the quads use the abdominals all right so we can just return to a squat position here if a squat's comfortable or you can just return to a seated position as well so that's position number four so we've done some work on the neck, the shoulders, the glutes, and the glutes should help then unlock the hamstrings a little bit, but we've done a lot of work with our spine flexed over. So now I'm gonna bring some extension to the legs. So we're gonna start off with a hip flexor stretch. Now in particular, we're gonna use the wall hip flexor stretch. You wanna make sure you've got a wall and a comfortable padded surface to place your knee on. I'm gonna start with the left-hand side because the left hand side is tight for me. Uh, we're gonna bring our knee as close as is comfortable to the wall and our foot pointed. And I'm gonna bring the other leg out in front. And I'm just gonna start off with a low position here. So we're gonna make sure we can sit kind of comfortably. This is gonna be the least stretched position for the hip flexors. I'm just gonna bring both hands on the ground. You can let this front leg just drop out to the side slightly if you need to. And we can just sit and move about a little bit in this position for about 20 seconds. Now we're gonna spend a fair bit of time here. So this is, if this is really uncomfortable for you, then I suggest you make the stretch easier. And the easiest way to do that is to bring the knee further away from the wall. So I'll give you 10 seconds just to modify it so you can sit here for a while. Then we're gonna play with some contractions. So first contraction here, we're gonna try and think about squeezing the glute on the back leg, trying to push our hip down towards the ground. So really focus on just squeezing the glute, trying to push, trying to get this hip down towards the ground. I'm gonna hold that for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Just gonna relax. We're then gonna do an opposite contraction. We're gonna try and pull our knee forward, almost like we're gonna do a leg raise. So we're gonna try and press that knee down into the ground or pull it forward. Again, we're gonna hold five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. And again, breathe out, try and sink that hip down a little deeper. I'm gonna sit here for another 10 seconds and then we're gonna go into a little bit more of an intense position. If you, if you are sort of feeling uncomfortable or fidgeting around this position, there's no harm in, in stepping out, pausing the video, taking 30 seconds and then, and then coming back in. So here, now we're gonna transition to the next position, which is gonna be upright. So we're gonna get ourselves into what would be a couch stretch position. So we're gonna press those hips back into the wall. And then try to get, the focus should be trying to get our hips as close as we can to the wall or as close as we can to our foot. And then if we can do, we can lean back and get shoulders to the wall as well. well that's the goal over the next sort of 30 seconds. Again, we're gonna play with some contractions here. So first contraction, we're gonna try and squeeze that glute. I'm gonna try and pull, I'm gonna try and rotate my hips. So if my hips were a cup, I'd imagine I'm gonna spill water out the, out the back of my hips. So I'm gonna hold that. 
I'm gonna hold that for five seconds. So five, four, really squeeze the glutes. Three, two, one. And again, relax. Second contraction, we're gonna try and kick into the wall. Again, five seconds. So kick into the wall. Five, four, three, two, one. And then relax. I'm gonna do one more of those glute squeezes as well while we're here. So squeeze those glutes, tuck the hips. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm just gonna lean back into it a little bit. I'm gonna hold this position just for another 10 seconds before we go into the final hip flexor stretch. Now they may notice that this stretch is being held for quite a while. Uh, and, and the reason I generally do that again is because I said earlier, people don't spend enough time in some positions or when we're doing maybe our, our stretch training or flexibility training in sessions, it's, it's shorter, it's more intense. Uh, and I like to complement that with some longer holds and especially for the hip flexors, they tend to be comp like, they tend to be deep muscles. They take a lot of time to release. So for this final position, we're gonna shift forward with the hips. We're gonna now, instead of coming forward onto the hands, we're gonna try and stay as upright as we can, lean on this front leg. I'm just gonna hold this position for another 30 seconds. This is probably gonna be the most intense stretch for both the hip flexor, right over the front of that hip. But by doing the work initially, get a little bit into the hip flexor, a little bit more into the quad standing up, this stretch should feel comparatively a little bit worse than it would if we hop straight into it. So. Can play around with some contractions here again. You can think about squeezing the glutes uh, if you want to, but I'm personally just gonna sit here and just breathe and focus on not dying. So just another 20 seconds here. Again, you can let that front leg just drop out a bit. But always trying to stay nice and upright, nice and tall with the torso. Come down, you can relax. You can shake that one off a bit. And then we're gonna swap sides. So we're gonna go to the right hand side now again, knee onto that padded surface. And then we're gonna bring that leg out and bring our hands down to the ground. And we're just gonna come forward into that original hip flexor stretch. Again, this one's a little bit more of about chilling out, but like before, if you can't get comfortable here, this is gonna be the least intense option. So make sure you do adjust things by moving the knee further out or, or further in to make sure it is right for you. I'm gonna start off with those contractions. So first thing, glute squeeze. Squeeze the glutes hard as you can, press that hip down towards the ground. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax again. That relaxation, try to feel like you can push yourself a little bit deeper into the stretch. We're then going to do the contrast stretch. So we're going to try and do the leg raise, the pulling the leg forward of that back leg. So we're going to try and press that knee down into the ground. So again, five, four, three, two, one. And again, try to relax a little bit deeper. I'm just going to stay here for another 10 seconds. Again, we come up into that quad stretch. So up again, nice and tall. Gonna try and get our hips towards our foot. Nice and upright with the torso. Gonna hold this for a little bit before we do some contractions again. Probably should be noted that I don't do every single one of these positions in the same length that I'm gonna be doing in this video. I'd say this is like the longest I would hold all of these positions in a day. Some days I might spend a little bit more time in other areas and a less time in, in some. As I said, it varies, but I will generally go through all of these seven positions as a little bit of a tester, a little bit of see how I'm doing for the day. Right, so glute squeeze, trying to tip water out the back of the pelvis, tucking the hips. Nice, strong contraction. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Next one, we're gonna do that kick into the wall. 
So we're going to try and kick into the wall. Again, five, four, three, two, one. And relax. We do one last glute squeeze and then we're going to go into that final position. So glute contraction, tucking those hips under. Five, four, three, two, one. Try to lean back, relax into this one a little bit. This is definitely the most intense personally for me. Um, it's quite a strong quad hip flexor stretch. But it always feels good. I usually use these as a warm up for my front splits. Always helps massively. The quads can really inhibit your hip extension. Right, slide down into that bottom position, pushing the hip forward. Stand nice and upright. Again, I'm just gonna sit here for 30 seconds. Just grab a yoga block so I can... Again, a lot of these positions is about being comfortable, so if you can get yourself a nice support so you can sink into it, support yourself. Don't, it doesn't need to be... Stretching isn't about uh, pushing yourself, being hard all the time. It's about sort of having that conversation with your body, being able to sit in a position and just breathe. Again, play around those contractions if you want to, kicking the foot to the wall, squeezing the glute, all of that sort of good stuff. Another 10 seconds here. So we can put those blocks away. So that's position, I think that's five, isn't it? Two more left to go through. The last two are a little bit quicker than those because obviously we're doing stretches per side. So that takes a little bit longer. Now I'm gonna move into a pancake. So we're gonna be seated if you can be seated with your pancake. You can also do this one standing. So in the same way as we did the pike to begin with, you can stand up just folding forward here do exactly the same stretches that we're going to be doing. So, first of all, we're just going to come forward. We're going to move a little bit side to side. Again, try to feel that one out. As we're moving side to side, we're going to try and feel like we're going to start rolling those hips a little bit. So again, you can do this exactly the same if you're standing up. As you're moving the hands from one foot to the other foot along the floor, try to feel that pelvis rotating. So we're going to come to the left hand side first, grab the foot if you can, or if you can't grab the foot, try to grab along the leg. If you have a gap between your stomach and your leg, try to give yourself some padding here so you're nice and supported and again, you can just sit, sink into it. If you can just touch the leg, then we can sit in that position again. I'm just gonna try and come so my torso is in the inside of my legs. I'm just gonna reach over to the side and just hold for about 20 seconds or so. So in this position, we can do a contraction. So I can think about trying to press my heel down into the ground. So I can try to press my heel down to the ground, contract the hamstring. Five, four, three, two, one. Breathe out, sink a little deeper. Just another few seconds here, I'm gonna swap sides. I'll walk my way back over again. I'm going to grab that leg and we're going to sink down to the side. Get your support if you need your support. Again, you're probably going to notice a little bit more of a stretch over lower back in this instance and obviously onto the leg that we're twisting onto. So, again, contraction here. We're going to try and press that heel down into the ground. So, if you're standing up, you want to just try and reach deeper into this stretch using the quadges and the hip flexors. Uh, if you're seated, pressing the heel down into the ground seems to work a little bit nicer. So five, four, three, two, one. Try to reach a little bit further into that one. Now, for instance, today, my left side, my left lower back is feeling a little bit tight. So I might just spend a little bit more time here. Um, I might, might play with, you know, rotating in different positions as well. Twisting a little bit. I'm not going to do that for the video, but... Just letting you guys know what I would personally do. I'm gonna walk back into the center and then this is where I need my support. So I'm gonna get myself something that I can 
relax my chest down onto, but I need something that I can also pull myself deeper with. Now, if you can do that by touching your legs, that also works fine. If you're standing, you may want to have a wall so you can lean back and sit the hips on the wall. And again, you can sit forward into this one. So I'm not necessarily pushing my max range of motion here. I'm just having the support. So I'm pushing myself to a stretch so I can feel a stretch. Um, I can feel that tightness, but uh, not too much that I can't just relax in this position. I'm just going to sit here and hold for about 30 seconds. I'm going to give my cushion a hug. And then again here, we can play with some contractions. So first up, we can try and press the heels down into the ground. So we're going to contract the hamstrings. So five, four, three, two, one. And relax. And here, I'm not necessarily looking to go deeper. What I am looking for when I'm sat like this is for the stretch to feel like it's dissipating a bit, like it's getting less. Next up, we can think about trying to use the quad and the hip flexors. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and think about, I'm going to pull my, my leg into the hip socket. Or alternatively, you can think about trying to press your stomach or your chest down into the supporting object. So I'm going to hold that contraction for five seconds. I'm going to pull my hips back, press my chest down. Five, four, three, two, one. And again, just stay in this position and just look for that stretch feeling to get away. I'm going to hold this last position for about another 10, 15 seconds. As I said, this one's a relaxed one. It's, it's just like I could push myself all the way down to the ground, but it would be too uncomfortable for me to just uh, sit and breathe and chill. But equally, you want to make sure you're pushing yourself a little bit. Right, that is the pancake. We're going to move on to the final stretch, the final position that I would go through with these, and that is going to be the hero pose, something you may have seen beforehand, done probably on countless videos now on this channel. Massive fan on this one. Uh, it hits the quads, hips, hip flexors, but it also gets you into a bit of extension as well. Now, I personally like to do this with some support underneath my hips. I feel, again, like the pancake, going too deep into this one is too uncomfortable for me just to sit there breathe, relax, which is to me the focus of doing this on a daily basis. So I would probably get some support under my knees if you need to. Um, if you need something to relax back onto as well, a sofa works really nicely. You can just lie back, rest the shoulder blades on a sofa and just literally chill out in that position. But for this video, I'm just going to do it with a couple of yoga blocks. So again, sink the, sink the hips down, probably stick one under my lower back and one up top. I'm just going to lie back and we can just let everything, everything is just coming into now into extension. I'm going to try and let the shoulder blades drop either side. So I'm going to feel a little bit of a stretch of the chest. I'm going to let the neck relax. If I want to support myself, I can do. And again, play around with the hands. You can have them completely overhead, I haven't bent, whatever feels comfortable. This position here, there's no real contractions or anything to be had. This for me is more about sitting in a position and just breathing. And again, because of a lot of what we do in the day is, is, is related to flexion. So being hunched over, hips being bent. This is like a nice global extension stretch to kind of just do the opposite to what you end up doing most of the day. So I'm just gonna breathe. For about 60 seconds here, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to let you guys chill out. You can move a little bit. You can adjust your position. Try and find something that you can be like, okay, cool. I can sit here for a bit now and I can chill. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it's enjoyable.
that is basically the routine. Now, I know this video is a little bit different to some of the usual routines that are more fixed and more follow along, but I would encourage you guys to maybe go away and use this routine, but, but think about it applying to you. So you've got your main positions, you've got your neck stretching, which is just something that I would personally recommend. It generally feels good, a lot of tension builds up there. You've got your shoulder extension or shoulder opening, but equally that could be you know, opening up overhead or whatever feels comfortable to you. You've got the glute stretch. Again, if you like this one I shared today, you could also sub in the 90 90, the pigeon, uh, the pike, obviously, the hip flexor stretch, the pancake, and then this global extension one. So I would try to just, you know, make sure you have all of those seven positions covered but play around with the variations, the techniques that are gonna work for you, your particular level of flexibility and the restrictions that you have. If you found this routine helpful, you're gonna give it a go, or if you have some suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. If you just enjoyed this video, you can always hit that thumbs up button, support the channel, run next to it is that subscribe button if you wanna join the Bodyweight Warrior Tribe. Don't miss out on any more future videos, but that's basically been it for this week, guys. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week and